For all its beauty and splendor, the wilderness can be a cruel teacher. Driving the Pacific Coast Highway can be incredibly dangerous. The road is very curvy, and some drivers get easily distracted by the beautiful landscapes surrounding them. Click the subscribe and like buttons. This is Outdoor Disasters. The Pacific Coast Highway, or California State Route 1, is a state highway that runs north-south along the coastline. It stretches more than 650 miles, from Mendocino County in the north to Dana Point in Orange County in the south. It is a beautiful highway, offering incredible scenic views of the Pacific Ocean. The scenic vistas that can be viewed from the Pacific Coast Highway are among the most beautiful anywhere in the world. Visitors flock from all over the country and the world to see the view from the PCH. The most infamous stretch of this highway is Big Sur Coast Highway. This twisting, cliff-hugging, coastal scenic drive runs from Monterey to San Luis Obispo, with cliffs plunging hundreds of feet down to rocky coves churning with foamy surf. It's no wonder that many people consider Big Sur the most dramatic stretch of coastline anywhere in the world. For Angela Hernandez, she would experience an ordeal of nightmares. On July 5, 2018, 23-year-old Angela started the 16-hour drive from Portland, Oregon to Lancaster, California. She was driving alone and headed down to visit with her older sister. While many drivers would take the much quicker I-5 route through California, Angela took the much more scenic PCH. Her drive was going to be a beautiful one, down PCH with views of the coastline. Angela was close to her family and kept in touch regularly. About 10 hours after she left home, Angela decided to pull off for the night and find a place to park and get some sleep. She parked her Jeep Patriot behind a Safeway grocery store near Half Moon Bay, California, and texted her sister to let her know where she was, and that was she going to get some sleep before continuing her journey the next day. The next morning, Angela woke up, drove to a gas station in Carmel to fill up, and headed on her way to her sister's. The weather was perfect headed down one of the most picturesque drives around. All seemed right with the world. Angela would never make it there. By nightfall, when Angela didn't arrive at the time she indicated, her family attempted to reach her in any way they can, calling, texting, and trying social media, but they are still met with silence. That night, when they still couldn't reach Angela and she didn't show up in Lancaster as planned, they reported her missing. Authorities searched up and down the PCH with no sightings. Sometime around noon on July 6, 2018, Angela Hernandez was in the final half of the drive down to her sister's. She was passing through Big Sur when suddenly a small animal appeared from nowhere and ran in front of her car. Instinct took over and she automatically swerved to miss it, the sharp yank on the steering wheel making her lose control and lunge toward the cliff edge and over the ledge she went, tumbling noisily 250 feet down to the rocky beach below, a beach that was so isolated and devoid of human life that she would be lucky to be found by anyone anytime soon. When her car came to a stop, she was out cold, knocked unconscious by the brutal bone-jarring crash landing. Angela regained consciousness to a nightmare scenario, rising seawater lapping around her feet, her seatbelt strapping her tightly to the seat, and all the electric windows wound up preventing the water from leaking out. She was in excruciating pain and was losing air from her lungs. These were definitely life-threatening injuries and her chances of survival were slim, not a soul in sight to offer any first aid. Amazingly, under these dire conditions, she didn't panic, realizing that a cool head was needed in order to get out of the car before the water hit the roof. Searching under the surface of the water, which was now above her knees, she located the multi-tool kept under the chair and broke the driver's side window. Somehow, she managed to drag herself out and swim painfully towards the beach, just in time before she passed out. This was just the start of her nightmare. Her first sight upon waking up, battered, shoeless, clothes and skin ripped and torn, was the sheer, unscalable cliffs surrounding the beach. She could see cars passing by on the road overhead, yet her yells for help went unheard. She was trapped on a desolate beach that few, if any, people visited, and no way to call for help. The next few days became a blur for Angela. She'd walk up and down the beach in search of another human being, 
climb on rocks to avoid the sharp sand, walk along the shore to avoid the hot rocks, and gather tiny crabs for food. She found a high spot she was able to climb and found herself there almost every day. She could see cars driving across the cliff and felt like if she could yell just loud enough, one would hear or see her. She'd stay there until the sun became unbearable and then find a way to slide back down to the shore. About three days had passed, back of her jeans was torn apart, her socks were nothing but holes, and starting to feel the effects of dehydration. She returned to the mangled jeep and started looking around for anything she could use. She found a 10-inch black hose that broke off during the crash. She walked farther south down the beach when she heard a dripping sound. As she looked up, she saw a huge patch of moss. And to her delight, there was moisture dripping from it. She caught the water and tasted it, and it was fresh. Using the hose, she drank the water, and this became her lifeline for the duration of the ordeal. Every day her routine would be to walk up and down the beach, looking for new high grounds, screaming help at the top of her lungs, and collecting water falling from the top of the cliffs. Every night she'd find the highest point she could climb up and find somewhere to fall asleep before the tide would rise. Every morning she would wake up soaked in sea mist and watch the sunrise. As the days passed, it would be a lie to say that things got easier, just more predictable. Songs she heard in years would play on repeat inside her head. She would daydream of foods to eat once found and imagine the face of the person who would eventually find her. One morning on the beach was an especially good one. She woke up in the middle of the night because of shoulder pain, but looked up and noticed the big dipper in the sky. She walked to her usual spots on the beach and started looking at everything a little bit differently. She had a good feeling about this day. She fell asleep between some big rocks. The day was warm and she woke up before the sun had gone down. When she sat up, she saw a woman walking across the shore. She thought it was a dream, but it wasn't. This was Chelsea Moore and her husband Chad Moore, who were walking along the beach off the Big Sur coast when they spotted a piece of the wrecked SUV. We saw a bumper first and we were like, hmm, there's a bumper, Chelsea Moore said. That's weird. And then came around another bend and saw the car. The Moors began picking scattered debris from the car, including its license plate, to turn over to the police. They then headed back to their campsite about one or two miles from the car along the beach and spotted Angela. We turned around and Angela was right there in the rocks, just looked like hell, Chad Moore said. She was happy at the same time, she was really happy to see us. The couple gave Hernandez food and blankets until emergency responders arrived. Chad stayed with Angela while Chelsea ran back to the campground to call for help. Angela was severely injured. When Chelsea arrived back at the campground, she immediately saw a missing flyer poster and realized the girl they found had been stuck there for a week. First responders had to rappel down to Angela. When they arrived, they treated her for her immediate injuries. A California Highway Patrol helicopter was used to airlift her in a special stretcher out of the area and to Twin Cities Community Hospital in Templeton, California. It was then that Angela learned the extent of her injuries. Hernandez would later learn from doctors that she was suffering from a brain hemorrhage during the first few days after the crash. She also had four broken ribs, fractures in both of her collarbones, a collapsed lung, ruptured blood vessels in her eyes, and extreme sunburn on her hands, feet, and face. Angela shortly after would write about her ordeal. She stated, but at the end of the day, none of that matters. I feel like I have everything I've ever wanted. I'm sitting here in the hospital laughing with my sister until she makes broken bones hurt. I've met some of the most beautiful human beings that I think I'll ever meet in my entire life. I've experienced something so unique and terrifying I can't imagine that there isn't a bigger purpose for me in this life. I don't know, you guys, life is incredible. When faced with an emergency survival situation, try not to panic. Panicking affects your ability to think critically and exercise good judgment. Make sure that you remember to remain calm. Take a deep breath and think about what is truly happening versus what you think is happening. As human beings, we tend to react emotionally but it is very powerful to recognize the difference between perceived and real risk. Finding a water source is vital for any survival situation. Useful tips so you can survive an outdoor disaster.